New Jersey, known for its beaches, reality TV shows, and apparently a monster that sours milk. Hello there, my name is Nessie and welcome to the dark side. If you clicked on this video, then you, just like me, are interested in the lore of cryptids and all things supernatural. Or somehow the YouTube algorithm gods put this in your recommended. Either way, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the legend of the Jersey Devil. Also known as the Leeds Devil, it is one of the most well-known cryptids in the United States. It's a monster of folklore that most residents in New Jersey and the surrounding states know very well. I myself have heard the tale of the Jersey Devil and the eeriness of the Pine Barrens where it is said to reside. Growing up in the area, it was a spooky tale passed on from one person to the next, and always had you wondering if and when you might have an encounter with it. Legend goes that Mother Leeds, who already had 12 children, became so upset finding out she was pregnant again that she cursed the unborn child. Her curse would ultimately come true. Shortly after delivery, the infant took on grotesque features, including bat wings, a horse's head, a serpent's tail, and hooved feet. During my research into the lore of this cryptid, I found a few variations of its origin story. Several newspapers, which documented the Leeds Devil, state that Mrs. Leeds was known to be wicked, dabbling in witchcraft, or having a wild nature. She's been characterized as a woman not wanting to be bound by the norms of that period, hating that she was married, and that she spent much of her time away from home and in the company of other men. This type of behavior was uncommon for the time period in which the Leeds Devil originates from. The time between 1607 and 1765 saw the settlement of many Europeans who came to the New World for a variety of reasons, such as religious freedom, wealth, and rebellion. There were numerous shifts in power dynamics as the French, Spanish, and English attempted to maintain control over their respective colonies and fought for dominance over their enemies' territories and settlements. Remember, this is a time that occurred before the Revolutionary War and the Constitution. It was an uncharted area in terms of independence in many aspects. During this time period, a woman's supposed role in life was to care for the household. Women were expected and taught to be subservient to their fathers until they were married. At that point, they were then to be subservient to their husbands. They had very few rights, could not vote, and could not claim or own land and property. They were seen as inferior to men, more specifically their husbands, and supposedly more inclined to sin. And with this understanding of history, the thought that perhaps the legend was more a symbolic warning to people at this time period could be true. A cautionary tale that this is what could happen if a woman were to be deemed uncontrollable. Many times, the telling of a story is meant to communicate a lesson or a moral, and perhaps that is what the creation of the Jersey Devil truly was, a warning. There is one account of this cryptid's origin story that stands out most to me. This version, written in the Morning Post, explains that rather than a partying wild woman, Mother Leeds was actually a more gentle soul. She's described as an otherworldly woman who loved her daughter. That's right, daughter, as an only one child, very different from the usual story we hear of 12 children. Mrs. Leeds had no desire for more children, expressing it multiple times, and even going so far as to say that she wished the child a devil if she were to have one. This is one of the only commonalities between this version and others. After her bold proclamation, she did become pregnant again and gave birth to a hideous beast. The child resembled the devil so much that it became known as the Leeds Devil. It did not cry, but rather shrieked and whined in a feral tone. Shortly after its birth, it was able to walk and control its limbs. It had piercing black eyes and remarkable strength. Said to chatter like a monkey, it would hurt those that tried to control it, including its parents. And long finger-like claws would rip into the material of its clothes that Mrs. Leeds would dress it in, in the hopes of hiding its appearance. The article goes on to state that the Leeds tried to treat the child as if it were their natural offspring, and that their neighbors, out of respect, curbed their curiosity. Even with their intent to maintain a normal life for the child, they still tended to keep it indoors and at times even chained or shackled it. 
I question that if the Leeds Devil was real, could it have possibly been a child born with a medical condition? It is well documented that pregnancy and births were dangerous during these times. Lack of medical knowledge and advancement, along with the strict beliefs that many of these early colonial settlers had, would mean that mental or physical medical conditions may be viewed as devilish or sinful. Could this have been the case for the Jersey Devil? And like many other scary urban legends that begin from misplaced fear and lack of understanding, maybe the myth of this cryptid was woven from these and became more than what it was originally intended. Despite her attempts to love the child, it would attack Mrs. Leeds and others viciously. One eventful night, the child flew up the chimney and then out of sight. The Leeds and many of their neighbors searched for it, but were unsuccessful. It would disappear and reappear over time, playing tricks and scaring people, until a final disappearance where it was seen heading off into the woodlands. The striking differences from this 1905 article and other versions of this lore led me to wonder who the Leeds really were, and why Mrs. Leeds in particular is documented as such a wrongdoer in many of the written accounts of her child's birth and subsequent life. As with any lore, finding records surrounding it can be more than difficult, and this is very true when seeking information on the Leeds family. I have to thank those internet sleuths that came before me for attempting to source and compile an accurate accounting of who the Leeds really were. Though she is commonly referred to as Mother Leeds, her surname has been recorded as Shrouds and Tarleton. The moniker Mother Leeds comes from where she resided, which was known as Leeds Point, though I've often seen it attributed to where her family originated from, which was Leeds, England. Her husband, who is not nearly as visible in the stories of the Jersey Devil, has been ascribed various names as well. Retellings have his name recorded as Daniel, Japhet, or Samuel. With more research, it seems as though his true name may be Samuel or Japhet, as Daniel has been recorded as his father. In the 1905 article, the family is described as being made up of Mr. Leeds, his wife, whose maiden name was Tarleton, and their daughter. Mrs. Leeds was said to come from a reputable family, and Mr. Leeds served in the Revolutionary War and had what was called a mark of honor scar. Again, all of this should be taken with a grain of salt, as records such as theirs are curated by non-official people and are hard to come by. But it is interesting to know that many older news sources do not use either Mr. or Mrs. Leeds' true surnames. What is not lacking in details are the accounts of the Jersey Devil's appearance and the numerous encounters individuals have had with it. This cryptid is said to be grotesquely built being a compilation of other animals' physical characteristics. The Akron Daily Democrat published its Jersey Sees a Devil article, detailing that the beast had an elongated, serpent-like body, cloven hooves, a horse's head, wings of a bat, and a forked tail, much like that of a dragon. Down Jersey, authored by Cornelius Wagon, outlines that the Jersey Devil is a leather-winged, steel-spring jumper of a goat's size, that could clear a cranberry bog at a bound. It's clear that this cryptid has the standard supernatural strength, tormenting behaviors, and scary physical characteristics that so many others of its creepy kind also possess. Its arrival is supposedly signaled by the howling of dogs and hooting of owls. Various accounts have recorded that it attacks and devours people at will as well as sours milk, lames horses, dries up cows, and destroys crops. You know, all your usual supernatural creature wrongdoings. In his book, The Pine Barrens, author John A. McPhee describes the Jersey Devil as having carried away two large dogs, three geese, four cats, and 31 ducks. And if the perpetrator was the Leeds Devil, the hall was modest, for the Leeds Devil has in the past been said to have devoured small children and to have mutilated strong young men. Its habitat, the Pine Barrens, is an expansive woodland area of New Jersey. Today, it's roughly 1.1 million acres of land, containing numerous trails, abandoned towns, swamps, and rivers. It's home to a variety of plants, trees, and wildlife. Honestly, if you're in the area, it's a great place for a hike 
and day of exploration. Just keep an eye out for your not-so-friendly cryptid. One last interesting tidbit I found was a little-known part of the Jersey Devil lore. That is, that an exorcism took place to banish the beast. The Altoona Morning Tribune ran an article which, among other things, outlines that a man of high virtue performed an exorcism of the Jersey Devil. It was to last for a hundred years, but the date of the banishment had been lost to time. Although, after digging into records and finding the dates aligned, it was then apparently considered the truth. The date for which the beast was said to reappear was 1840. The New York Sun in 1887 also gives credence to this theory as it states the cryptid had only just reappeared about 50 years ago, making its reemergence sometime around the year 1837. In the Akron Daily Democrat article of August 5, 1899 states something similar, with the devil only having reappeared about 60 years ago. With records hard to find, the ease with which these articles could be copying or influencing one another, and with the commonality of articles to be slightly edited and republished in other newspapers during these old times, it's difficult to establish any real truth behind it. Whether the Jersey Devil was banished or not, it didn't lie low for long. Many have come face to face with the cryptid, and thankfully they have told their tales of their scary encounters. While the interactions people have had with the monster are numerous, there are quite a few that stand out. From January 16th to the 21st of 1909, the residents of Pennsylvania and New Jersey along the Delaware River were tormented by the cryptid. On January 16th in Bristol, PA, James Sackville, a police officer, was on his usual evening patrol when dogs began barking and howling ominously. Upon seeing the beast standing by the canal, he pulled out his pistol and ran towards the creature. Letting out a piercing scream, the creature fled, hopping down along the canal and then took flight. The officer shot off a few rounds, but the creature ultimately got away. When describing the beast, he stated it as being winged and hopping like a bird. That same day, the postmaster of Bristol saw the beast flying over the Delaware River and recounted his experience by saying, I looked out upon the Delaware and saw flying diagonally across what appeared to be a large crane, but which was emanating a glow like a firefly. Its head resembled that of a ram with curled horns and its long thick neck was thrust forward in flight. It had long thin wings and short legs, the front legs shorter than the hind legs. And just like the officer, he also heard the terrible scream it let out. From January 17th to the 19th, two households were awakened by strange noises and horrible screeching. The Loden family was the first to be visited by the Jersey Devil, which circled their home and attempted to gain entry. The morning after, the Lodens and their neighbors found their yards destroyed, with trash and debris littered about, along with track marks in their backyard and on the roof. On the 19th, Mr. and Mrs. Evans had their own encounter with the cryptid. Around 2.30 a.m., they heard strange noises and said they watched the creature for about 10 minutes. Mr. Evans described it as being about three feet and a half high, with a head like a collie dog and a face like a horse. It had a long neck, wings about two feet long, its back legs were like those of a crane, and it had horse's hooves. It walked on its back legs and held up two short front legs with paws on them. It didn't use the front legs at all while we were watching, he said. My wife and I were scared, I tell you, but I managed to open the window and say shoo, and it turned around, barked at me, and flew away. From the 20th to the 21st, more individuals had encounters with the beast, including a policeman, reverend, and a few other civilians. Members of the Black Hawk Social Club were among the many that heard and saw it. Upon hearing weird noises, the members looked out a window, only to see the Jersey Devil staring back at them. On the same day, the fire department responded to a report of what was described as an ostrich sitting on the roof of a man's home. Once they arrived, they used the fire hose to knock the creature down, only for it to charge at the surrounding crowd. In a panic, and to scare it off, the group began throwing objects at it. 
Of all these encounters, there are two common factors with the reports. The beast's physical and behavioral characteristics. With that and the date range, it could be that all these individuals did see something. And they aren't the only ones. Over the next few decades, the Jersey Devil had sporadic appearances in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. It is difficult not to notice the heavy amount of symbolism woven throughout the story of the Jersey Devil. Religious, political, and historical connotations all tie into the lore. And even with the possible answers found in those factors for how this story came about, there are still lingering questions. The differences between retellings, news articles, and literature model any factual details or timelines of this legend. Ultimately, that is probably a factor that allows these types of lore to maintain existence through hundreds of years. And perhaps the Jersey Devil isn't finished with its creepy crusade yet. Only time will tell. Thank you so much for watching. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the scripted, so please leave a comment below. If you like the video, then press that like button and feel free to subscribe if you want to see my future cryptid deep dives. This channel is going to be dedicated to all things supernatural, so if you enjoy that, this is the place for you. Thanks again, and until next time, stay spooky and stay safe out there.